President Trump's Senate impeachment trial will formally begin next week. Chief Justice John Roberts was sworn in yesterday to preside over the trial. It's only the third time in history a chief justice will step into that role. How he navigates this political fight could have an impact on how Americans view federal courts. Jan Crawford explains. So help you God. I do. With that, John G. Roberts was sworn in yesterday to take on a role outlined in the Constitution. When the President of the United States is tried, the Chief Justice shall preside. But unlike most trials where judges are in complete control, here it'll be the Senate that has the first and last word. Jeff Rosen, President and CEO of the National Constitution Center, says Roberts' role is to be a symbol of neutrality. To be accepted by both sides as fair, as not favoring one side or another. Sitting at the center of a political fight poses a unique challenge for the 64-year-old Chief Justice. He's no fan of the limelight. And going back to his 2005 confirmation hearings has fiercely defended the independence of federal judges, comparing them to umpires who call balls and strikes. The role of an umpire and a judge is critical. They make sure everybody plays by the rules. But in an impeachment trial, not only does the Senate set the rules, it can, by a majority vote, overturn any of Roberts' rulings. The Senate will convene as a court of impeachment. 21 years ago, Roberts' predecessor, the late Chief Justice William Rehnquist, presided over President Clinton's impeachment trial. I do. But he only made one ruling, that senators were more than jurors, because the Senate could also dictate the trial like a judge. It's all the more important to have a figure who is recognized by both sides as above politics. And that's why it's so important that it's Chief Justice Roberts. So help me God. The Chief Justice has been quick to defend federal judges from partisan attacks, including by President Trump. We do not serve one party or one interest. We serve one nation. That's one reason why Harvard Law School's Richard Lazarus, Roberts's longtime friend, says the chief may see the trial as an opportunity. To show uh, the American people uh, the nonpartisan nature of the way the judges and justices work. He said Roberts will not shy away from making a ruling even if it could be overridden. He's not just going to be an incidental player because the fact is he wants to show the American people uh, the face of the Supreme Court. Ilya Shapiro is the director of the Robert A. Levy Center for Constitutional Studies at the Cato Institute and joins me now. Ilya, welcome. So, you know, whether or not Chief Justice Roberts plays a large role or a small role uh, has yet to be determined. As we just heard there, Chief Justice Rehnquist played a rather small role in the uh, Clinton impeachment trial. And as we mentioned earlier, any ruling he makes can be overturned by a majority of senators. But isn't it also true that if he decides to, let's say, support a resolution brought up by Democrats to enter some evidence or or have a witness take the stand, it would not behoove, uh, you know, Republican senators to overturn that ruling? Because it would well, look to he, them like they were trying to, you know, go against a judge's ruling who's supposed to be the impartial one. Chief Justice Roberts is in an awkward position. There are going to be very few types of rulings in this situation that don't have some sort of partisan political salience. So he's damned if he does and damned if he doesn't. Uh, as you said, and as Jan's report uh, described, Chief Justice Rehnquist had really one ruling about not describing the senators as jurors. And indeed, this is not purely a trial in the courtroom sense, because the senators are deciding not just the facts, but also the law, and they're conducting it. And really, the the presiding judge, the chief justice in this case, is more of a traffic cop than in a normal court situation. But uh, as you say, he may have opportunities to make rulings, not on whether to call witnesses, but whether, say, there's a, a privilege against uh, a type of uh, evidence or witness that the, the president's lawyers might raise. And uh, ultimately, he's definitely going to try not to insert himself into political battles. He'll probably say, well, this is something that's for uh, the Senate to decide mm-hmm. in the first place, maybe moves like that. Uh, so but he, he is, can... I think, going to... So he can punt any of those decisions to the Senate? Like, for instance, if, if exactly what you just mentioned comes up, that a piece of evidence is going to be uh, submitted and the president or the White House says, no, I'm, I'm 
I'm asserting executive privilege here. I do not want that piece of evidence to be shown. He can then punt that decision to the Senate and not make a ruling at all about it, is what you're saying. There's not really much of a rule book. What he what he could do is is say, you know, here's my tentative ruling. Uh, I want to submit this to the Senate. There could be other procedural motions on that. He could make a ruling uh, that says um, we're going to hold that till the end of the trial altogether. Um, uh, again, there, there, he, he's getting some advice from the parliamentarian, and there are standing rules in the Senate for a whole host of things, but we don't know exactly how things will come up. Uh, and I think he is going to try to make rulings that uh, disturb the status quo very little and try to force the senators to make the, mo the decisions that, that will have political ramifications. And Ilya, remind us of John Roberts' history as a chief justice. I mean, he was appointed by a Republican president, but he has tried hard to keep politics out of the court, hasn't he? Well, especially with uh, the departure of Justice Kennedy a year and a half ago, uh, John Roberts is at the middle of the court jurisprudentially or ideologically, and he's very much been a, a pragmatist or a, a minimalist, taking small steps rather than issuing big rulings the first time uh, a legal uh, issue comes before him. And he has sided with the, the, the more liberal justices on uh, Obamacare, for example, but he's not a moderate in the sense that, that Justice Kennedy was. He hasn't moved left in office as some previous justices were. And he also had a bit of an unusual uh, discussion uh, with the president uh, over Thanksgiving 2018 when uh, the president talked about uh, Obama judges and, and, and Chief Justice Roberts replied in an unusual public statement that there is no such thing as a Trump judge or an Obama judge. We all try to do uh, our best. But again, he really doesn't want to insert himself. He doesn't want to either he doesn't want to reinforce whatever political perception people might have about him, and he's going to try to follow uh, his mentor, Chief Justice Rehnquist's uh, advice, which is uh, at the end, conclusion of the Clinton impeachment trial, Rehnquist said, uh, I didn't do very much at all, and I did, did it, it well. well. I think that's, yeah. what, that's what Roberts <laughs> is uh, aiming for. Yeah. Uh, what gives you that impression? Because Roberts does not, like you said, he does not like to take large steps. He prefers baby steps. He doesn't like the limelight. Does that give you the impression that he will try to minimize his impact on the Senate impeachment trial? He's very cautious. He His whole project has tried to uh, withdraw the Supreme Court from the toxic political environment uh, enveloping the rest of Washington. Now, uh, your, your evaluation is as good as mine about how successful he's been in that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think this will definitely extend uh, to that. Now, but remember, these kinds of rulings that he'll be called, called upon to make here are civil procedure. They're evidence-based things. These are not substantive uh, uh, areas of law, generally speaking. And whatever ruling he makes, uh, can only be appealed to the Senate. There is no, you know, the full Supreme Court taking something up or anything like that. Will the Chief Justice still have other duties in the Supreme Court uh, simultaneously as he is presiding over this trial? Well, the trial technically started this week, and there were oral arguments uh, in the Supreme Court this week. What they did during the Clinton trial was uh, they would have, during days when there were oral arguments at the Supreme Court, those would take place in the morning, and then the impeachment trial would take place in the afternoon. So the Supreme Court is scheduled to sit next week, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then it's off for a couple of weeks, picks back up again in February. So on those days uh, that do coincide with argument, I think the impeachment trial will simply be in the afternoons. Busy time in Washington. Well, Ilya Shapiro, thank you so much for sharing your legal insight with us. My pleasure. Take care.